So they ask us which of these determinants has the same determinant as this one. And you could just find the determinant of each of these, plug and chug, and see which one matches. Wouldn't be bad. Uh, if you have the time, why not? But they wanted, they didn't want us to do that. They never really wanted us to do anything that tedious. We were supposed to notice um, some properties of determinants here. So, I forgot to change this one. So I was supposed to do, copy that wrong. Otherwise, it was in the same. All right, so we're supposed to notice some stuff. So if we look at part A, um, we have negative 2, negative 3, 2. Hey, that was the second line. And 1, 2, 3 was the first line. So they just interchanged the first two rows. And they kept the bottom one the same. So we have a property that says if we switch two rows of a, of a matrix, the determinant is actually equal to negative the determinant of the original matrix. So if we call this matrix A, then the determinant of this would actually be negative determinant A. OK. So can't be that one. Uh, so if we look at B, uh, what do we notice? We notice that the first row is the same, the second row is the same, and the third row is not. And it's not quite a multiple of this either. We have a property for that as well. We have 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, but 1 times 2 isn't 4. So not exactly sure what to do with this one yet. We'll set them aside. We'll come to this one. Uh, this one for C, we notice that the top row is, in fact, twice the top row here, with the other rows completely left alone. So we have a rule that if we multiply a row of a matrix by a constant, the determinant of the new matrix is that constant, in this case 2, times the determinant of the old matrix. So if you multiply a row by a constant, you'll multiply the determinant by that same constant. So this is twice that, so this is not our guy. And so we look at D. So D, what did they do here? They just interchanged these two rows, columns. Right? So they kept this column the same, the third column the same, and they switched those two. So the same idea as switching rows, um, same thing happens when you switch columns. This will be the negative determinant of matrix A. So it must be this one. It must be B by process of elimination. But why? And admittedly, I did. it took me a while to see it. So if you want to, you could just double check by taking the determinant of this and that. I'll do it later. But what they want us to see is elementary row operations will not change the determinant of the matrix. So if you multiply one row by another and add them together, uh, multiply one row by a constant and add that row to another row, you will not change the determinant. In this case, they didn't bother with any multipliers, and it was still hard to see. Notice that 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 1 is 4. So all they did was they took the first row plus the second row, or sorry, plus the third row of the original matrix to make the new third row of this one. So the first row plus the third row to make the new third row. And so that elementary row 